Thank you for your dealings, O oh God. We give you all the glory. Please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we are going into your word. Speak your word. In a language that we understand. Lord, please speak your word. In the name of Jesus. Over to you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, faithful Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I'm going to praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Good morning, Mass. How has it been going? I'm surprised some sisters are still in the hostel. Maybe they thought we'd be coming to them. Oh, yeah, wake up. It's time. Wake up. It's time. When you are here for retreat, retreat, you're on your own. No? You're on your own with your father. And we thank God for helping us. Let's have a seat. Mommy, please sit. For how he has been helping us. Our brothers, they wanted us to feel that, okay, this session is not important. So, but God helped us to still worship him. That's how to know the true worshipers. The worship team, Sister Florence, God bless you. In Jesus' name. How many of us were able to connect in the spirit? God bless you. Hallelujah. So when you want to worship God, you worship God from your what? From your spirit. Because of situations like this. God be strengthen our brothers in Jesus' name. Today, or let me say this hour, the Holy Spirit wants to send his word to some set of people again. I pray it will be you. If the word is your own, you will know it. Because even this church, I didn't plan for it. But I just have to take it off again. And when I was asking God, what do you want to tell your people? And he led me to the book of Exodus chapter 2. And I know God, I know that you know God has his way of planning things. All along this particular passage, this particular place has been coming to my spirit even before the program at all. Anytime we wanted to pray concerning this program, that illustration will come and we use it to pray. But now I know that God wants to address it. It's a very long chapter. Exodus chapter 2 and 3. So we may not be able to read it all. It is a story that we know very well. But I pray that this morning again, the word of God will come to us afresh. In the name of Jesus. The word of God will be so new to us. In the name of Jesus. We will not get used to the word of God. We will not be familiar with the word of God. But it will be new to us. In the name of Jesus. It is the story of Moses. Exodus chapter 2. If you read it from chapter 1. It was a terrible period in the land of. In the life. In the lives of the Israelites. If you don't know the story, let me see your hand so that we know where to start from. Good. Hallelujah. So we know the story. It was a terrible moment. So who can tell me what was happening then? What was happening in the land when Moses was born? What was happening? They were killing who? The male children. Which means Moses automatically was an unwanted child. Do you agree with me? He was an unwanted child. Hey! It doesn't matter how you were conceived. Probably your parents were not even ready for you. Probably they gave that to you out of wedlock. Probably something happened that made your parents to hate you so much because you became a burden unto them. And you were raised with hatred, you were not loved. You were not loved. 
probably they were not so proud of you. They were not so proud to identify themselves with you. And because of that, they have released so many negative words into your lives while you are growing up. And you grew up with those words. You are not alone. Moses is our case study this morning. There was chaos in the land. It was terrible. It was serious. The Israelite women, they were not even praying to get pregnant at that time. Maybe your parents too were not praying to be pregnant when you came. Or somebody just impregnated your mom. But you are not a mistake. They did not want Moses. And I could imagine the prayers of the parents then. That even if they wanted to pray, they would be praying, God, give me a girl child. God, give me a girl child. God, give me a girl child. And a male child came. Voila. Maybe your own case too. Your parents were praying, God, give us a male child. God, give us a male child. And lo and behold, a female child came and they were disappointed. Can you imagine the disappointment on the faces of Moses' parents? Why? Because he was a boy. Boy came. In a time like this, and Moses' birth became a burden unto his parents. For some of us here, maybe to our parents or our guardians, our birth, our existence is nothing but a burden to them. And you are down. You are wearied. And you became a shadow of yourself. The Lord will deliver you today. Because this word is coming for you. They were down. They were supposed to give them joy. Oh, what a blessing. But no. The birth of Moses brought sorrow to them. Thank God for some of us that our beds, you know, give peace, joy to our parents. But in the case of Moses, it was not like that. We know who Moses was eventually. But Moses did not start like that at all. It was a terrible moment. Miss Moses was an unwanted child because of the happenings in the land. But as far as God is concerned, God planned it. Because at that season, somebody must come to deliver the Israelite. And with God's timing, the baby must arrive at that particular year to a particular family. But the family that received Moses, they didn't know that God had big plans for them. They didn't know they are so special to God. And God chose them that, ah, I looked around, but I've chosen to favor your family and bless you with this child. That will be somebody's testimony in Jesus' name. Because in the real sense, that is who you are. Forget about the kind of life you are living now. But the unfortunate part of the story is that many of us, we continue with that lifestyle. Lifestyle of no identity, I'm not loved, I'm unwanted, I'm this, I'm that. Hey, a day came and Moses experienced the turn around. That day has come for you. Because one of the things God said, I didn't know God would be ministering to us in that dimension, is that this retreat is a burning bush. And I remember I mentioned it to some people Maybe those I me group or PWF or on um, social media. I should have a witness in the house. I said, this meeting is what? It's a burning bush. Because that is what God said. But I tell you, I'm just having the full understanding this morning. The burning bush transformed the life of Moses. And he began to live a new life. This is your own bonny bush. Because after this meeting, a new you is arriving. A new you shall arise. 
Moses' pregnancy was an unwanted pregnancy. They had two children before. They had Aaron. They had Miriam. So, what to look on what to look in. What else were they looking for? After the death of Moses, did you hear that they tried to give out another baby? For their mind, they were saying, God forbid. Because the trouble we are carrying, they, are carry, they were carrying a bundle of joy. <laughs> Look like them. Same way with many of us. When your uncles, your families, when they see you, what is the first thing that comes to their mind? Also today, the burden has come. They see you as the body. Not that you are carrying body, no. But you, gun, gun, you are what? The body. So you in their life means you are a body on their neck. Like a yoke on their neck. Oh God. God did not form anybody by mistake. God did not create anybody by mistake. Even if they did not plan for you. Or you are worthless to them. If you are worthless to God, he wouldn't have sent you to this world in the first place. You are a woman of value. You are a baby of value. A baby of purpose. A baby on a mission. I call you a baby because to God you are a baby. That is who you are. God will never send anybody to the world by mistake. No. Uh -uh. One of the names we call God is who? Intentional God. God is so intentional about everything he does. With your life, with your existence, is intentional. For God to have sent you to that family, he is intentional about it. Even if your family refused to recognize the grace of God upon your life. Even if they don't recognize the grace that you carry, you can't blame them. You can't blame them. It is the people with understanding. I mean, with understanding. They open their understanding. They will know who you are and what you carry. You know many children that carry great glory. In their family, most times, they see them as a non-entity. Troublemaker. Because those kind of children will not just be comfortable in that sphere. They shall want to go. Something will be driving them. What drove Moses to go and kill? The vision. The passion. What he carried. Even when he has not discovered it. But what would the people say? In fact, what did they say? Modra. Onija Gidijaga. Troublemaker. This and that. They give such kind of child. Different kinds of name. That is not the name God called you. Something is actually pushing you. Driving you. Choking you. Make you restless. But if you don't get the right channel to understand and power it, it will look as if you are just misbehaving up and down. They will not understand you. They will look at you as if you are a frustrated entity. But you are not. Because something is making you restless. Or if they will be wise enough to tarry in the place of prayer in the spirit and help you to discover that. Then, you will be a great blessing. Not just, but even to the generations. God has brought you here. This is your burning bush. A place of encounter. Something must change in you. Your orientation, your mentality must change about yourself. It is not how people see you. Because if you see yourself the way people are seeing you, you will run away from your destiny. When they called Moses, you are a murderer. Do you want to kill us again? You are this. You are. Th what happened? He fled. Ah! May you not run away from your destiny in Jesus' name. Moses fled. Ah! He fled. He became a shepherd. Many of us are Yorubas here. In Yoruba land. Yoruba land of Nigeria for the sake of people that will be watching you know online. in Yoruba land if a son-in-law is living with his father-in-law with all his family ah 
ogumburukuni ogukinio but you know Moses was comfortable um baba ba ya we um ninugbo they gave they gave him a wife children he was eating so he felt like God has said to do me what a lie i will not settle for less in Jesus name but you know that is truly the lifestyle of many people when they run away from their destiny, they run away from their vision. They now said, ah, at least God has settled me. I have this source of income. At least I'm married. And I have my children. Let me say, I just be serving God. Get like this. Nibo! Is that the call of God upon your life? Is that the demand of God upon your destiny? You now allowed your background to define you. Moses had a terrible background. Despite the fact that his parents were, what, were supposed to be priests, generation of Levites, and God had planned for them. God sent the baby on a purpose. But the baby looked like a body because of the time, the environment, and the happenings around that time. I don't know the factors surrounding your own birth. That makes you feel less of yourself. Moses became, Moses became a body. They needed to hide Moses. Oh my, and beg mama. Some people, some parents, they hid our pregnancy. Oh, you hear you good on my And if you are a parent listening to me or watching, and you have a child like that, May God forgive you. May God forgive you. If you are treating that child less because of the situations and circumstances surrounding the birth of that baby. Even if the baby is an unwanted pregnancy, you don't want the baby, but God wants the baby. And that is why he's releasing the baby. And it's not about you now. Who are you? It's about God. The creator of heaven and earth. He has plans. Some people want to terminate unwanted pregnancy now. That one may not be for people who are here. But for the people online who will see this video. I have that strong feelings. That's why I'm looking straight into the camera. Because I'm looking at your eyes. I know you will see this video. You are pregnant. Out of wedlock. A wonderful sister of God. Firebrand sister of God. You are pregnant. And you are planning to abort the baby. God has a plan for the baby. That is why he's sending it. And because God identifies you. He identifies you. That is why he's sending the baby through you. Don't disrupt God's plan. Don't abort the baby. But eventually if there is somebody here too. God has plan for that baby. That baby. So they hid Moses for three months. And when they could no longer hide him, what did they do? They packaged him to be thrown away. But because God had plans for Moses, Moses did not die. You survived. You grow up to this age because God has plans for you. If we are to talk about the way your parents treated you or dealt with you, ah, we are telling me no what you could take by If you are alive, it is because God has plans for you. God doesn't have, have plans for the dead, except for the living. So if you are living. God has something to do with your life. They put Moses on river. River. I don't know if it did not occur to Moses' mother. What if there is an arrow with the basket and water begins to come in into the basket and the basket sinks? 
What if there is a crocodile in the river? What if there is hippopotamus? What if there is an anaconda? What if the basket goes to a wicked soul who will just kill the baby? What if? What if the Lord did not inspire Miriam to keep watch over the basket? So many what if. But the answer is because God preserved him. If God is preserving a man, everything will work together for the preservation of that person. Ah, God is preserving you. It is because God did not allow it. Oh God, just save me. Almost there is nothing like almost. God has arranged it. It is divine arrangement. Nothing like almost. You are alive. Because God kept you. You are here. Because God kept you. God arranged it again because God had planned for Moses. And that is why some people can no more shatter you. The Holy Spirit is opening my eyes to somebody. She has tried to kill herself. She has attempted murder. I don't want to maintain eye contact with the person. Decide. Manana mo shakota namuri. You have attempted murder to kill yourself. Tanima kurianda namusha. But the mercy of God preserved you. Hey. To rip your law on niara to fefia ye reta. Only on to fefia ye rero. You can't die. You can't kill yourself. Because God is preserving you. To fulfill that purpose, to fulfill that destiny. So God preserved the most. <laughs> and somebody found him, the princess of Pharaoh. Why? Because God wanted Moses to live in the palace, to understand the language of the palace. For all things work together. For our good. Even that unpleasant situation, your background, your kind of family. You know, some people will look at their family, 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 family. No. Why am I here? God, is it my sin? Have I missed it somewhere? Have I made a mistake? No. Mania Cabo Shantonia. For all things work together for good. For those who love God, those who are called according to what? According to his purpose. Those who are called according to his purpose. If the mother did not tree her on the river, tree him on the river, Pharaoh's daughter would not have. Tell yourself, all things are working together for my good. Even where you find yourself, where you are, my sisters, my mommies, all things are working together for your good. Even when you don't understand. Oh, I love this sound. Boye mi bi o ye mi masimi le o masimi lo luwa masimi le ani boye mi bi o ye mi masimi le o simi lo luwa simi le boye mi bi o ye mi hey jesus
Boye o bi o ye o sha ti sin mi le o Jowo sin mi loluwa sin mi le Ani boye o bi o ye o sha sin mi le Eh Boye mi bi o ye mi wo sin mi le o The truth of the matter is you don't need to understand God. You can't understand him now. He's too complex to understand. For some of us here, who people see to be complex, do they understand us? You know I did not mention your name jokingly. I'm intentional about it. Shukbo bo ye o bi o ye o. You can't understand God. It's too deep to understand. He will just be revealing himself to you in a bit. As you walk with him, you walk by faith, you walk in him, you walk with him, then you begin to understand the fraction that he wants you to understand. Oh God. So when the daughter of Pharaoh found Moses, you see divine arrangement. Why you don't need to be angry? Some of us will not forgive our mother because of that. Oh Lord, you be so dope. Boniko, you see. You can't blame some people. My mother abandoned me when I was three years old. Ah. Am I justifying that? Am I encouraging that? No. But you look beyond the pain. See the purpose there. See the handwriting of God there. What is God saying in this situation? My husband is not fear. Why will he treat me this way? Is it about your husband or about God? And when God will arrange it in a divine way, what happened? Miriam said, Ah, I have a nanny who can take care of him. Ah, ah. One good one. one plus one. Well, oh, that should be the mother. How many of us agree with me? Uh -uh. And the woman had breasts to feed the baby. Ah, no, now. As a baby who is crying, if a baby is crying and you give the baby to, what will the baby do? And he will be struggling immediately for the breast. So there will be connection that this is the mother now. Are you with me? So why would Pharaoh's daughter be so foolish not to realize? We tell you God is at work. Abi, thank God we have nursing mothers here. Why will I give the mother to her mommy and she will not keep quiet immediately and be struggling for breath? Yet, woman, this Pharaoh's daughter did not know. Instead, she paid to take care of her own son. Some of us will say, if not because God just sent somebody to help me, a guardian, a nanny to train me, where would I be? It's a divine arrangement. Divine arrangement. Boye mi bi o ye mi masimile o Masimi loluwa masimile Bo te mi lorun bi o te mi lorun masimile o Masimi Bo ba su mi to ba re mi ma sha asimile o Aniboye mi bi o ye mi Eh 
Boruju bi o ti e ni tu mo ma simile o They paid mother to take care of Moses part of divine arrangement Some children maybe after some times you know they disconnected from their mother but I want to love for my NCB can just go and be staying there be living there and they tortured you maltreated and that even affected the journey of your life on the long run one way or the other you return to your parents and somebody is even sponsoring you there and you are still angry you better don't be angry because that anger is the issue with many people that is why you are not seeing god's purpose that is what is limiting you some people here the way they you know have bitterness and grudges against some of their family members olagbara not until you release them and allow the peace of god and know the purpose of god and understand that all things are actually working together for your good there will always be problem oh god let's fast forward the story you see why we cannot read the whole chapter now because we started reading from exodus chapter 1 we now read chapter 2 we will now read chapter 3 and a time came because that palace was not Moses' place. He can't be comfortable. Something must be pushing him. <laughs> have you been told or have you had? It's just misbehaving from one place to another. Because that place is not our place, she will misbehave. You restless. Catfish is the most rugged fish that I know. You now put catfish here and you expect the catfish to be still and remain calm and be quiet. And you are saying, what is disturbing here? The catfish has this own place to stay now and it's still restless. It cannot be restless. I mean, it cannot rest. It will be restless because that is not its place. Even if it's a small bowl of water, as she see me, dear man, then it will realize again that this place cannot contain me. I cannot swim here. I cannot expand here. I need a bigger place. Then you take the catfish, you put it inside the bucket. When you put it inside the bucket, because of the water, it will come a bit. Before you know it, pram. Oh, the best star. Why? This place is too small. This place cannot contain me. I just realized this place is too small. When I wanted to spread and swim, I discovered that there is limitation everywhere. This place cannot contain me. You put it in the bath. It will rest more. Move a bit. Before you know it, out. Put him in the stream or river or in the pond. Big pond. What will you do? Ah, I by me. I ate by me. You cannot be comfortable. Maybe I eat or take by. But if you don't have the Spirit of God to guide you, you will continue to misbehave there. And because they don't understand you, they will not help the matter. Help yourself. Let God help you. So Moses was misbehaving. But what they called misbehaving, he was actually trying to understand purpose and vision. He was actually trying to walk in that dimension. But because he lacked understanding, he was not doing it right. Because the, God, the call of God upon the life of Moses was to deliver the oppressed. Am I right? To deliver the oppressed, to set the captive free. Somebody like that will not be able to withstand 
cheating or oppression. Or a can, if you are oppressing somebody beside some that kind of a person, the person will react. Oh, okay, ah, ah. Talk, but you see, or she why did he? The demand of God upon such person's life will not allow him or her to rest. But in my language, in my land area, your rubas, what would they call it? Beboru, are upale, kilo kan, baramid eleru. We have different names. Instead of mothers, mothers, I'm challenging us to, to study that kind of a child and help him or her to grow in that dimension in the grace of God. But so Moses killed and ran away from his destiny. And ran away from fulfilling purpose. Many of us, we have run away. Some are still running. Why? Because you try to fulfill purpose. You try to operate in the dimension that some of us will say, one spirit is leading me. Because you don't even know, you can't even differentiate if the Holy Spirit is the one leading you. But you shall say, you shall say one spirit is leading me. Something is just pushing me to do it. But because you do it and you are insulted, you do what? You run away. You are meant to sing and ill souls. You hold the microphone and oh, talon flat, yeah. Oh, cock off key. The keyboard is uh, the instrumentalist, God will help them all. You know, they have one kind that is, they'll just give you that bombastic inspiration man, for learning. You don't even know the next chorus to raise. You become confused. And you settle for less. I'm not good enough. Me, Mori Kodjare. And you remain at the back seats forever. Why? Because somebody embarrassed you. Somebody challenged you. They challenged Moses. Who sent you? Who made you a judge? And they have challenged you. Who sent you? Who called you into music ministry? You're supposed to intercede. You carry the grace of intercession. <laughs> Thank God I have my sister in the house. <laughs> and I remember one of our discussions. You're supposed to intercede. You carry the grace of intercession. Do you know the people that will frustrate you more? The people that God is leading you to, to pray for. Who frustrated Moses? Not be Israelites. You will not see back. Hmm. I'm not praying again. I will just be praying for my children and my marriage and people that come to me. You sit at the bench. You are as good as Moses who ran away from his vision. <laughs> you carry the grace to write scripts. God sees my heart. <laughs> With what I'm saying, I don't have anybody in mind. But I won't keep quiet because the story looks like your own. The Holy Spirit is the one speaking to you, not Stasha. The grace to write scripts. A little more collapsed. Only go fine. But here, the limelight. And you see it back. Grace to care for people. You know it's a calling, it's a grace. To care for people. To serve. It's a great, it's a calling. You are not less because you are serving others. Who are you serving? You are serving God in their lives. Remember, you don't see God physically. Remember that chapter in the book of Matthew? You ask God, God, when have we done this? When have we given you water? When did we close you? When did you. When? And God will tell you, I've done it for one of these. You have done it for me. Grace to serve. As you are doing our job in my language, taking care of them, they just look down on you as if you are nobody. And you ask yourself, ah, show some woman. Are you paying me? I'm even doing this. Am I your mate? Are we age mates? Even in grace, are we mates? 
You become angry. Not, <laughs> you become angry and you withdraw. Ah, It's not about the person you are ministering to. It's about the God you are serving through the person. Don't run away like Moses. Some of us, we've allowed so many things. Cares of this personal issues to overwhelm our spirits. And we feel that we are not good enough because we are experiencing that. And we withdraw to our shell. That is how devil wants you to make you feel. So you are just, devil is playing the game. Only pass. Like my people would be. <laughs> Only pass. And you are following the pass. Devil is trying to program you. And you are following the program. Instead of you to crash every demonic system. Working against your life and destiny. Don't run away from your destiny. Don't run away from your vision. The reason why we are having so much problem in this generation is because vision carriers are going back into their shell. But God is raising the Bura. So Moses ran away. Ran away from destiny. Ah! One beautiful thing about Moses. You know when he ran and he got to a place and he found favor. So called favor. You would think like, ah, God has answered my prayer. God has settled me. But in the real sense, he was settling for less. Same with many people. Little relief, your own relief. Ah, God has answered my prayer. At least I pray for my children. God answered my prayer. Let me just be enjoying it like this. You are settling for less. God will not raise you because of your children alone. Your womb is too anointed, too sacred, too powerful to be for just two or three children alone. Kilo day. God is not a waster of resources. Why would God give you such powerful womb to raise just two, three people alone? You are to raise nations. The physical womb you carry is just a template of the spiritual womb that God has given you. What are you giving birth to? What happens to those visions? Those great ideas? You conceive them in a womb. How many years do you want to use to carry Pregnancy. Pregnancy of vision and revelation. For, yes. For 10 years now, some people have been carrying this revelation. If you ask them tomorrow, they will still tell you. They have been saying this since 10 years ago. Last year, if you ask them, one was so sure. They will still share the vision. Five years later, they will still share the same vision. Two years, they will still share the same vision. And you keep asking, so when do you want to birth this vision? You carry a pregnancy for nine months. Koto kochu mesange akoluwa. Ma kajo. Da won kini ya dele vai. Oluwa jeo dele. Oluwa jeo dele. And when you want to birth the vision, biological children, oma anroro gan. Abi? Even if you give bad truth, yes. I can't eh? How easy it is to birth vision. But many of us are running away from that pain of betting that vision. There is no vision that is easy to birth. 
if you are waiting for the day it will be easy and convenient for you to birth, that day can never come. A pregnant woman who is waiting for the day, it will be Monday, December. But that is how many of us behave. You can't read the vision. Ah, oh, Lord, I don't have this. I don't have the resources. I don't have that. It will be painful. It will not be convenient. And you keep holding on pregnancy. And you are complaining of body pain. That body pain cannot be healed. Because you are the cause of the pain. Give back to the vision. And you will be relieved. How much in over time? The vision is using over time now. If he asks you to go, do what? Go. That vision you are carrying, you have to keep it to it. Stop holding on to it. There can never be any convenient time. Because no vision is easy to birth. But when you are ready to give a push, then the strength will come. The grace will come. The supernatural power will come to bear the vision. Oh, this meeting you, meeting you think, ah, it's easy, Abby. God knows it can never be my plan. Never. People believe us that she's always busy. She just, who likes stress? I don't like it. Ask me, I hate traveling. Because when I'm traveling and in a, I'm in a car or bus, I can't do anything. I'm, a, I'm that kind of person that cannot read in the car. I can't even watch film. I can't watch anything in the car. So I'll just sit down and be looking. It's so boring. So unlovely. But ask me, I travel a lot. I love to stay with my family, but I have cause to leave my family in many cases. This vision. And when God finished the matter, he said accommodation and feeding, free. My people must eat well and sleep well. Do you know the money I have in my bank account today? 4,000 naira. My girl account. To bear me witness the hundreds of thousands of naira that went into this program. How? I remember I shared some even with my brother. Somebody just, ah, I saw this flyer and I was led to give to this. Take this and it will meet a particular need. Take that. Not by strength. So, Amy called. So, people were saying thank you for feeding us yesterday. It's not me, oh. It's God, oh. And when I got to this place, the man in charge said, when I saw you, the Holy Spirit said, I must assist. And he gave, let me, don't let me use the word unreasonable. Reasonable discount. As in unimaginable discount. The one we don't have the money to pay for, he made favor to pay for it. Is it settled or not? But if I've stayed back, ah, Oluwa, January, on sort of vision match. I don't forget in February, God said, You are shooting a movie, full length movie. Then God, young is here. Five days. And I told the young because oh whoa. Oh Lord, you're the man. so no ni yaki so one le nothing. But God will do it. Ah, kima she or one million la man wa. Ni eh ah. You're the man so no ni yaki. God will do it. And God did it. What am I saying? Ask every visionary. Giving birth to vision. They didn't give birth to that vision easily. 
But when you are ready to push, the grace will be available for you. The first monetary gift I will receive for this program, when I was having 4,000 naira, and I told my girl, she's in the kitchen now, said, get me, I'm going to the place we are using today. She asked me, Kile Veloje, said, I want to go and book. I said, oh, what? If you know the girl, you know how she could ask some funny question. I said, no. I responded in Yoruba, I fell off and no book. That was the language, the exact way I said it. I fell off and no book. And he, eh, well, no problem. I went to the bedroom. I had a good bath. God is my witness. Immediately, I stepped out of the door. Me oti soka le corridor. Some people know my house there. Immediately, I stepped out of the door. Trying to close the door behind me. A call came. I received the call. Hello, sister Jeyi. I said I can't number him. Bye. At the entrance. Ah, what do you mean? Accommodation to our book. Right there. I did not take a step further. I sent the account details. And I continued with my journey. Before I got to the junction, the credit alert. God started with 150,000 to start with. When you have accommodation to search. When I got here and I looked at the I said, ah, how is the only car? said, discount. I said, eh? Oluwa. What if I did not move? That is the word. God did not move. At the second instance, I remember he told my covenant brother, Jago, the sound, the kidney cut that will be used, that will be using. <laughs> okay, I'll get back to you. When he got back to me, I was on location. So stressed. It was around 8, 9, 9, the, you know, the night. But we shot till around 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. on that day. And I was the assistant director. So as he was talking, I was just struggling to talk. Yeah, we need so so amount. It's too much. I don't know. Said ah ah. Russia go. We need share a share. And I needed to end the call because they were waiting for me on the set. When we finished with the location on that day, and I checked my phone, a message has been waiting for me. The person copied the flyer of the program and tagged me. I am led to so for this program. And when she sent the money, it catered for all the equipment. So 7 a.m. the following morning, I just sent the money to my brother. Be like, ah, ah. My husband doesn't believe if I tell him there is no money. Because if I'm telling you there is no money now, okay, I was there, I was there, I said, ah, I will need 10,000 naira. My husband, please, can you send the 10,000 naira? I said, okay, okay. On my way, it wasn't up to 30 minutes later. Yeah, she you have not been able to send the money. Oh, the network said, yeah, Don't worry. Because God has sent the money in, in multiple folds. And he would tell me, Stop stressing me that you don't have money. <laughs> you are not my bukata, you are God's bukata. Why am I sharing this testimony? To the glory of God. No vision is easy to bear. But when you push the grace, the power, the anointing, the support, the help, everything you need to bring it forth. We do what? We come. Don't run away. Don't run away. Don't settle for less. You know the way Moses would have talked? I can't do anything. I'm helpless. Let me just hide myself. My Yoruba people will say, Esha again for you, Ara, mi kpama. Eh, ma fa ye, kpama. Don't hide your destiny. All in the name of, mo fe for you, Ara, mi kpama. Which ori? Don't hide your destiny. 
Let God help you. Moses was living in his father-in-law's house. Belum be mercy. He belot him more ya way. She ya la konama funi. I be too bad. I can't even imagine it. Sawa jila ro. I can't baba daddy. My dear Lord. Maybe I'm talking from African mentality or Yoruba belief. But if that is my reasoning, permit me. I'm trying to be real. I don't know how to pretend. But a day came. The bunny bush. Don't forget how we started. God said this meeting is what? A bunny bush. God needed the attention of Moses so he could listen to God. God needed to create a scene to bring Moses closer. This retreat is your own sin, S-C-E-N-E, -E, that God has created to get your attention because he wants to speak to you. Has he been speaking? God needed to create a burning bush. At least for the first time, Moses was able to leave what he was doing. And what was he even doing? What was he doing? Tending the, the iron darkening. Is that what God asked him to be doing? When God has better plans for his life. But to Moses, if you ask Moses, if God said, Moses, come. I know the answer Moses will give to God. Lord, I'm busy. And God will ask Moses, what are you busy doing? I'm tending the flock of my father-in-law. That is how many of us respond now. God is calling you. Separate yourself. Come apart. I want to talk with you. I want to speak with you. Most times, what do we tell God? Lord, I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. Busy with different kinds of activities. Busy doing what? Lord, I cannot close my shop. I cannot close my shop. Customers will come. Customers will come. What are you doing? You are tending the flock. Sheep. Jesus is calling. Come, my daughter. We need to talk. I have a great assignment for you. Lord, I'm busy. My office, my office, they will not release me. Because at the end of the month, if you told what in that they know, I will collect salary. Abi, is that not where Moses was feeding from? In Colombo, go away on my jail. Lord, I'm busy. Lord, I'm busy. Lord, I need to do this. They pray this time for me. Lord, I'm busy. I want to clean up the house. This house is dirty. This house is dirty. I want to sweep. I want to wash plates. I want to do this. I always tell people, if you come to my house and you think it's not tidy enough for you to stay, sorry, don't come again. Don't come again. Or you help me to clean it up. Why? I don't have the time. Come and do this for me. I need to, Lord, I, I wish to eat pandered yam and a 40 row and it will take time. It will take time. When I'm through, Lord. So by the time you finish pounding, you fin I might say you not eat good food. No. You finish your you went to you go to the market, buy kinika. That is when you now have the full time to be pricing meat. Hello, Lena, five thousand. Go back two thousand. You know you are still coming to four thousand. You will know ah women alaye. Kima alaye rano. You will now use 30 minutes on a spot pricing meat. And the Holy Spirit is telling you, I need to speak with you. Ah, I need to rush to the market. Tell the on my day. Tell the on my day. I need to get. Ah, mama le yi ko sheto. Eja lo sa kwa uke. So you use 30 minutes to trek to the upper market. But oma, to la ba mwe wa da kwa uke. Yon po mwa to ka kwa ni wa. Young boy, my big one, one lady. Ah, oh yeah, go walk past Ah, you now use two hours walking up and down in the market. By the time you get home, you finish cooking. Even Holy Spirit, thank God, Holy Spirit doesn't sleep. Don't let me say rest. You'll be tired and sleep off. Even when he's talking, you cannot hear because your spirit man is sleeping. Your spirit, soul, and body they are sleeping. Somebody needs to wake up. 
No wonder God created this burning bush. Come. But because Moses love, you will know that if it's this generation, Moses will love drama. Of course he loved drama. Because when those people were fighting, he watched them. Till one killed the other. I mean, till one, you know, the one was a president before he assisted to kill. Not that he jumped at the fight. He watched the scene for a minute before he intervened. So God needed to create another scene. This scene, Tony Buffett war, huh, made him leave what? He did not complain then that I'm busy, I cannot watch this. So Moses could actually leave those things. He left those things and he moved closer. Let me move closer. Shalom. God will get you. In the name of Jesus. And when he gets you, you will not escape. In the name of Jesus. God got Moses. 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 And God called him. God is calling somebody from this meeting. Because, glory be to God, he has gotten our attention. I don't know the reason why you are here. Something must have attracted you to come. Some people, because God compelled them to come. Some people, ah, that sister will see her face. I need to see, I've been seeing her on screen. I need to see her face. But no one. Ah, that brother, I've been hearing of his administration. I want to be under his administration. We are here for different reasons. That is the bait that God used to bring us here. Some people could be here. Ah, Sasha is my sister. Even if I'm not going there to do anything, let me go and give her moral support. A bait. A bait. So God has brought us here. For what? To hear him. To hear his call. And he has been calling since yesterday. As he's calling, he's dealing with us. Settling cases. Sending his word. He has sent his word again this morning. If not for a meeting like this, you stay alone to pray alone for one hour. What we did in the morning. Like yet, because I this idea of a thing. I oh God. And you wake up in the morning, one hour. Only you. Teach only the prayer and church. But this morning you had no choice. If you don't have anything to talk to, to say to God, and stay there, stay there and be looking. <laughs> last, last, you got something doing for that one hour. Hey, hey, Benny. The bait. Because he wants to speak to our mind. He wants to speak to our spirit. He has spoken again. Hey. Have you heard him talking? Has he spoken to you again this morning? But Moses did something. When Moses had God speaking, did he stay back? He swung into action. He left the place and returned to the place of destiny. You have had God's word this morning. You are not going back to the place you used to be. I'm not talking about your physical place. Oh. The place you used to be in the spirit. The place you used to be in the place of destiny. The place you used to be in the Lord. That comfortable place. I'm cool. I'm cool here. Yeah. Nobody is stressing me. I'm not stressing anybody. Nobody was stressing Moses and he was not stressing anybody. But that was not his place. Don't be comfortable at the wrong place. Even when God was sending Moses forth, ah, he was still giving excuses. And be reminding God 
the one who created you, as if he did not see you. Didn't know who, you, who he is. Abby. The same way many of us try to explain things to God. You know it's funny. When we want to do a K, that is why that is when we describe ourselves to God. Let me use Joanna as an example. Somebody tried this yesterday. Oh Yarimbi. Just greet her and say, Hello, my baby. How are you, baby girl? Right there. She will tell you, I'm not a baby. Don't call me baby. I'm not a baby. There was a day. Oh, Sister Bumi, she's in the kitchen. She has a baby. Chris. There was a day she called. Somebody called her baby. Jonna, you are a baby. Jonna, my baby, how are you? Do you know what she did? She brought the person. Come. Oh, I'm when you're This is a baby. What was she trying to say? Like, if you don't know, this is a baby. So I'm not a baby. I'm not a baby. Now, somebody who we are, he will even, she will even tell my mother. Not once, not twice. But you know, grandma would love to call her my baby. Grandma, I said, don't call me a baby. I'm not a baby. No, try it when she comes. Call her a baby. The kind of eyes he will give you. And the way she will respond. Ah, why is everybody calling me a baby? Am I a baby? I'm not a baby. Tell them not to call me baby again. My own mother call her. Grandma, don't call me baby. So when grandma wants to greet her on phone, she wants to use it. Hello, my, 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 my. <laughs> Only hand the discussion here, come out sorrow. But when she wants to eat, my mommy, please feed me now. You know I'm not a big girl, I'm a baby. I'm still a small girl. That is how many of us behave. In some cases, you let God feel like, Lord, I'm not a baby. I'm grown up, I'm an adult. I'm matured. But when it has to do with responsibilities, you want to feed yourself. My mommy, please, I'm not a big girl now. You know, I'm six I'm, I'm not. I'm a baby. But you said you're not a baby. But you can see I'm a baby. See response. The same way we behave with God. When God gives you responsibility, that is when you begin to remind God who you are. Lord, you know I'm a stammerer. Lord, you know I don't have money. Lord, you know I'm a nursing mother. As if he's, he's not aware. Lord, you know I'm pregnant. So he's not aware. Lord, you know I don't have husband. Lord, you know I'm single and young. Lord, you know I'm still a youth. Lord, you know I'm married, my husband. Lord, you know I, I, I have parents to take care of. We begin to tell God things as if he doesn't know. Just to wave those things away. May God forgive you. May God forgive you. May God forgive you. Moses gave excuses. But God gave him a name. He said, when I get there, what do I tell them? I think that should be your question. People will ask you, who sent you? Principalities and power will ask you. In your name we have come. In the name of Jesus we have come. You, res you respect that authority. In whose name? In whose authority? God told him. Tell them that I am that I am. Another version says, I am who I am. I am who I say I am. I am that I am. Is the one sending you. Then why do you need to be afraid? Who will not respect his authority? Who will not honor him? <laughs> because at the mention of the name of Jesus, every name was bow. There are some names that when you mention it, they dare not argue. 
That is the person sending you. Why are you still afraid? Moses was scared. Eh, Mr. Mara, God said, I've arranged Haran for you. So that limitation, that you sit there, I can't go because this thing is not available. Why? God has arranged it for you. But if you don't move, you don't meet them. If Moses had not moved, he would not have seen Aaron. Because God has positioned Aaron at a place. Are we together? I'm saying this because I believe you understand the story. God has positioned Aaron at a location. If Moses did not move to go to that location, he wouldn't have met with Aaron. He would be there all alone, still lamenting. God, there is no helper. There is no interpreter. There is because one is already waiting for you at a particular place. You cannot stay here and be saying there is no helper. When helper is waiting for you there, you have to move if you will see the helper of that vision. How many of us are ready to move today? Can we be on our feet? God has spoken to you. He has gotten your attention. He has sent his word. He has been dealing with you. I said it yesterday. I will still say it today. You know, with a kind of teaching like this, in a meeting like this, I don't know how to raise prayer points. I leave you to God. Because I believe it's an individual dealing. If God has dealt with you in a way, He has spoken to you. You need His help. Can you open your mouth and begin to pray? Can you open your mouth and begin to pray? Let Him know where you need His help. Let Him know where you want Him to help you. Let Him know that you need His mercy. Let him know that you need his help. Hmm. God wants you to cry out to him today. I don't know the prayer point to raise you. I don't have prayer points for you. But put your life on divine history. You're supposed to be. Or something has discouraged you out of the track. In your heart, begin to make correction, amendments. Are you bitter against some people? Your background, and you still see them to be at fault for your present location. Yema kayabo zahindalia. Nena mazuka tana moria. Oh Lord, I've come. Oh Lord, I've come. Oh Lord, I've come. Oh Lord, I have come. Oh Lord, I have come. I've heard your voice. I've heard your voice. I've heard your voice. But we are not like Edda, who said, I heard your voice and I'm afraid. We have heard your voice, O oh God. And we are humbled. Don't <laughs> La pa yi bagbom kin le tu bosu mo fa mi mora mora oluwa si bagbe le butoku fa mi mora 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 oluwa Ibe jere to 
Daniye Oluwa mi Shati gbo re To so ti fere si mi Hey Shugbo mo fende Lakma yi gbagbo Ki le tu bo su mo Fami mo ra Mo ra oluwa Si bi agbe Le bu to gu That is my heart cry oh lord Fami mo ra Mo ra Mo ra oluwa Oluwa moti gbo re have had the voice to sort Oh re sort e fere si mi Shugo mo fe ti de la pa igbagbo la pa igbagbo I want to rise oh god in the hand of faith I want to be closely drawn to you lord Fami mo Hey I want to come to me and la bo so Come, To him, why, oh Lord, as thou art born, I had done a mozart on it. Do not pass me by, oh Savior, say, oh my Savior, say, in Nani Makuria, turn a to God Holy this morning. Do not pass me. Jesus. 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 Go. 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 Oh, ma, she called me. Ma, called me. Oh, look. Oh, I do. Rami. Yeah. 
you for sending your word to us. Thank you for helping us in your presence. Thank you, faithful Father. Lord, we continue your name. Loruko Jesu Loruko Jesu Yanu yo Oh, God, yeah. 